Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today I want to talk to you guys about uh, choosing a channel to market for your product, okay? In terms of choosing a sales channel for a particular market. Now, what we're talking about today is whether or not you should focus on a distribution channel to market, whether you should work through a distributor, or whether you should work with a sales agent or a sales firm, okay? And what I want to do today is I want to basically kind of clear the air between these two because there's a big difference between the two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the pros and cons of each, and I'm going to try and do it with as much time as I have. Uh, and I'm going to start first with the distributor. So in this case, what you're doing is a lot of times, a lot of times, companies are, are are choosing either a distributor or a sales agent in a given market, either because it is in a market they can't access, uh, it's a it's another country, or what have you. But they're trying to make a decision: do we go with a distributor or do we go with a sales agent? So I, I'm going to try and kind of clear the air up today, okay, with that. So when you look at a distributor, we're going to talk about the pros, the benefits of dealing with a distributor, okay? First of all, when you're dealing with a distributor, a lot of the times, if you're choosing the right distributor, they're going to bring a, a very big network to the table, okay? So they're going to bring a network. What do I mean by that? I mean they are going to bring a sales network, and that is feet on the ground. They're going to bring um, the ability to penetrate a market because they're going to have salespeople out there pushing your product. Okay, so in this case, you need that sales capability, you need that sales bandwidth, if you will, and they can provide it. Okay, the other thing is that the other thing that they provide in terms of you know the benefits or the pros of dealing with distribution is that they can sometimes be market specialists. Okay, okay. They basically know the market. They know their market. Okay, they can give you advice on how best to approach it. They can give you feedback on the market. They can provide you with all kinds of important data about what they're trying to do and how they're trying to do it. But essentially, you're going to them because you expect them to be able to penetrate the customers that you can't get into yourself. Okay, so the first one is that they bring a network. The second thing is that they bring. Uh, they're market specialists, and the third is they've got the contacts, okay? They've got the contacts. They know who to go after, and they know how to go after them. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to dealing with a distributor. Um, you know, you got the network, you got market specialists, they got the contacts, and I guess the fourth one we could probably say is that we could call them product specialists, okay? Hopefully you're dealing with somebody who's a product specialist, a company that that focuses on a given product in a, in a market. Maybe they have a particular niche that they fill, but they know what they're doing, and that's what they can bring to the table. Let's talk about the cons, okay? Now, these are the drawbacks. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback with a distributor is their markup, all right? Now, one of the problems is typically a distributor should be anywhere between 15 to 20% markup in terms of what they should be putting up on a particular product. The problem is, is that a lot of times they won't tell you what they're charging. And it's not uncommon for them to be charging upwards of 40%. In fact, I worked for a distributor once and they did this all the time. They, they thought they were a manufacturer, they acted like one, they, they went to companies that they wanted to distribute their product, but then they started smacking on a markup of about 40%. And if you don't know what's going on, it can kill you in the market. That's the second problem, okay? Sometimes they won't tell you who they're quoting, won't share quote information. Now, if you want that to happen, okay, a lot of times you're dealing with a distributor, they're going to tell you, yeah, we'll sell you a product for you, but, you know, they're our customers. We're not telling you where these customers are. We're not going to tell you where they're located. We're not going to tell you who the, the best customers are. We're going to go out there. We'll grow it for you. The problem is, is that, you know, six months down the line or a year down the line, when nothing's happening, you go to that market yourself, all of a sudden you start speaking to their customers and you find out that your product is priced out of the market. And you can't quite really figure that out because going into this situation, you thought you had a pretty good price. Well, what they've been doing is they've been pricing you out of the market, okay? They've been, they've been pricing you out of the market. They've been adding 40% when they should have been taking 20. Now, why would they do that? Because a lot of distributors, what they do is you're just an add-on. Okay, and I, this is this is a big con of dealing with a distributor. A lot of times, what a distributor does, and, and having worked for a distributor, I know exactly how they think. Let's say a distributor has ten to fifteen or twenty companies that they represent. What they're doing is they're using your company 
as part of their marketing tool. They're able to go up in front of their customers and say, look at all these companies that come to us so that we can sell their products. That's because we're, we are the, uh, the, the product specialists. We, we're the, the market specialists, the product specialists, the companies that are choosing us. And the problem is, is that they may have 15 or 20 or 100 cus companies that they represent or whatever, but they're really only working on a small percentage of them. So what they're doing is they may be working on maybe two or three A customers, and you're the B or C customers, and they're going to use you to make sure that they get the sale on these ones. So they're going to price you out of the market in order to make sure that the, the A customers that they represent are more attractive. And it happens a lot. Now, what are the pros of dealing with a sales agent? Well, for one thing, it's a straight commission sale. All right? 10% right off the bat. That's what they should expect. That's what they should be paid. They're going to get paid 10% 10, 10 period. They're not going to play around with your price. Why? Because you're going to quote directly. Okay, so number one is 10%. Number two, you're going to quote directly. And the benefit of being able to quote directly to your end user customer is that basically what you're doing is the sales agent is bringing you leads. Okay, so they're, number three, they're going to bring you leads. They're going to say, this company is interested in your product. This is the guy you want to quote, and they're going to try and sell. They're going to work with you to sell, but at the end of the day, they're basically a lead generator. Okay? And, and the benefit of dealing with a sales firm is that more often than not, you should be able to negotiate a situation where they get 10% commission on sales if your gross profit allows it on, on the product you're selling. You're going to quote directly to the customer, they're bringing you leads, and you're going to copy them. You're going to copy them, but you're going to, you're, you're going to know what your end user customer is going to get quoted because the sales agent is bringing it to you. So now number four, you're going to quote directly, quote and copy the sales agent. Okay, they're not going to play with your, with your pricing. They're not going to do all kinds of silly things. They're not going to play games with you. They're just going to bring you the lead. This is the guy that's interested. You're going to quote. You're going to send the email directly. You're going to have more control over your pricing. Okay, now let's talk about the cons. Okay, the first one, is limited reach. Most of these sales agents are small, small firms, so they don't really have a huge reach. Okay, so they have a limited reach. Okay, number two, some aren't product specialists. Okay, they just want to sell whatever they can get their hands on, so they're not specialized. Number three, a lot of times, and I hate to say this, but because they are a smaller enterprise with a with a low overhead, they're not as committed, okay? So, not as committed. Essentially, you know, they're, they're here today, gone tomorrow, and they may not have the results that you're looking for. They may not have the long-term results that you're looking for. However, there is a benefit to working with them because you're going to make sure that the price your customer gets, the end user in that market, you're protecting your price with a, with a sales agent. So when it comes down to looking at a distributor or a sales agent, understand the pros and cons of each. Take the time to do your homework. And by all means, whichever one you try to, to work with, make sure you measure results. Okay? I'm going to just basically end this off by saying set benchmarks. You want to see results, you want to measure performance, set KPI, key performance indicators. All right, so that's it. Choosing between a distributor or a sales agent as a channel to market. Take care, Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.